and I'm an international student from DVC. Uh, when I heard about Career Connection Day at PBL Business Club three weeks ago, I saw the great potential of meeting community leaders of Walnut Creek and how it could influence me as a new resident of California. Moreover, to the highlight of Career Connection Day was the group session. Because I graduated from a media upper secondary school in Sweden, I immediately felt like signing up for Mr. Campbell's job, a job shadow. He felt very passionate about his work and was talking about the rights and wrongs when it comes to filming. I really appreciate the short period of time he spent with me and from what I learned. Furthermore, I am currently studying for my business degree with a special specialization for international business. So when I learned about Bank of America and Mr. Bob Romero's experience about working overseas, I did not hesitate to attend his group session. He told a bunch of amazing stories about his life and career. It impacted me in many ways, but mostly to work harder for my degree. I have always been curious about how the bank system works, and that's why I chose U.S. Bank Group Session as my last choice. Jesse Castro told me about what kind of positions there are at UC bank, U.S. Bank and what they do. If I'm going to be honest, I was not fond of banking. It, it seemed like a stiff job. But after the session and some influence from U.S. Bank, it opened my eyes, and I started to consider a finance career. For the big picture, this was an amazing day and a great opportunity to meet people and learn about different career paths for the future. Thank you. My name is Gary Red. And seeing all the my profile to you guys, two seconds ago I have the, I have the thought of standing up when the Stanford versus Cal is losing. <laughs> The event is designed for us to learn something, and indeed, we learned a lot. First gentleman I talked to was John Zernobio. He is an executive director of Boy Scout of America. Before the event started, after those guys came early, and he was the first person who came around and started shaking hands with me. It gave me a sense of self branding And the most important thing I learned from him is branding. Boy Scout has a long tradition of giving them, which gives them a moral value, and Boy Scout has been using that for all kinds of sales. Some can turn down Boy Scouts when they're saying, please, I hope you share the spirit of Boy Scout. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, here's the cutest thing. But I really just keep saying, please, please, <laughs> please. And the, circuit, and the second person I talked to was Steve Lambert. He is a senior partner of CBR Company as a salesman and an engineer. He generally told us how the job works and show us how he benefits work and personal life by showing others electronic device such as his laptop, his couple of cell phones, and his, his personal hotspot and make us objects. <laughs> The theme for his talk was to try and keep trying. It's his experience of being a salesperson takes him down the way to pursue a sales manager, a sales engineering degree. And a summary of what he said is since business is about everything, with all your experience, you may not succeed, but you cannot simply fail. And I like that quote a lot. The last but not least person I talked to was Carol Carol Carillo. Carillo. When I saw her profile, I thought on profit organization, am I doing volunteer stuff and stay the shade of all those raw for profit organizations? But as a matter of fact, I was wrong. She actually has a lot of voice than other organizations in this, in this particular aspect. And she explained how her business cycle affects the organizations and how she found funds for all the work she's doing. And she showed us how, how she makes people feel bad if they don't do the and how better they feel after the donation. And all the words just drag me out of those misty land I had before. After I stood here for a couple of minutes, maybe some of you have noticed I have a little pen in here, which I can probably pronounce
to all of you guys. I am a member of a Rotor Red Club. Yeah. You can see. <laughs> so I guess I will see all of you guys in a future time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope you guys had a good lunch and you guys are having a nice time. Before I get in any further, I'd like to ask a question. Simple but a little hard. Who knows what happened exactly 39,352 days ago in downtown Chicago? I'll take that. Oh, yep, you have a smart person. Okay. So exactly 39,352 days ago, the, on February 3rd, 1905, the first road meeting is initiated by Paul P. Harris in downtown Chicago with a total of only five members. And today, the surprising, is that, the surprising thing is that 1.2 million people around the world have joined the Rotary, Act, Rotary Club, uh, which is 240,000 times more than a century ago, for the purpose of bringing business people and professional leaders together to provide humanitarian services, emphasize high ethical standards, and help construct goodwill and peace in the world. After seeing the numbers of people skyrocketing and the wonderful purpose of this club, I was sincerely interested. I wanted to know more about this club, wanted to know why it didn't treat so much people in such a relatively short time. So, when Professor Seifer, our club's advisor, wonderful advisor, who is not here unfortunately, uh, told me about this whole event, I was definitely interested. I was in there without hesitation. So, I was determined to go to Career Connections Day, and I met wonderful people who gave me valuable lessons. Uh, the three mentors I had were John Finaglio and Karen Lyle and Wayne Hansen. They nourished my hungry mind, which is still and always will be hungry in the future. With these insights and the information of the jobs, I was very surprised. So I'll talk about the insights I've gotten from these mentors in a brief demeanor due to the lack of time. Firstly, John Finaglio, CEO and Scout Executive taught me about Boy Scouts, and as an international student, I wasn't fully aware of what Boy Scouts really was. So he really filled that gap of mine, inside my mind, sorry. And I knew about Boy Scouts more in specific. And he also told me how Boy Scouts had survived throughout the long years in fierce competition. Insight number one, insight number one was make people comfortable and have a constant tradition, and people will come to you the next mentor was Karen Lyle, the creator of the Quantum, cooperation and many teams accomplishing a mission, and an entrepreneur, which I want to be when I grow up, who taught me to always have fun and be interested in what I do and be passionate about what I do. Her insight number two was to always identify the resources available around you and build good relationships, accumulate uh, communication skills, and then analyze abilities around the people. And lastly, I had Leighton Hansen former postmasters who enlightened me about postmasters, how they had survived throughout the event of electronic mails. He told me insight number three, be good to people and they'll do good back to you. These insights may seem obvious to some people, but it is definitely forgotten in the society nowadays. And it surely reminded me that these were the core insights that were gonna get me to the pinnacle of that mountain. You see, I still have so much to go to get to that pinnacle of that mountain compared to you all. However, I know I will get there and when I get there, I know that it will be these insights that will, that will save me from the avalanche, from the mountains. And I know that it will be these insights that will give me nourishment and satiety when I'm in hunger. So I'd like to sincerely thank you for giving me this opportunity and priceless time. And I hope events like this will go on in the future so that students like me can be more motivated and influenced to provide humanitarian services, emphasize high ethical standards, and construct goodwill and peace in the world. So thank you for listening to my humble speech. Thank you to the business program at DVC for allowing us this opportunity. And thank you to the Rotarians for letting us sit in on your meetings and hosting this workshop. First, I'd like to start out with saying what interested me into this workshop was I was working for the government in Sacramento. I was commuting for Martinez. I got laid off, and I've been looking for a new career path since then. And I'm trying to learn all I can, take some classes at DVC, keep my options open. And, you know, it was kind of a blessing in disguise to me getting laid off because desk jobs have never been my thing. I've always yearned for more. I like to have 
not the same type of thing day in and day out. It, it bores me. So this type of business, entrepreneurial spirit, and the club, humanitarian efforts, it's always interested me. So when I heard about the workshop, I jumped at the opportunity. So as many of my colleagues, I guess you I don't know, former students, students have mentioned, they, they got the opportunity to talk to a few of the people in the shadow wing, but I had the honor of uh, going out with Gary, Gary Horney, and he took us, myself and another student, out on a field trip around Walnut Creek. We got the hands-on approach, it was very nice, he drove us around, showed us some of the landmarks, and so a little bit about Gary, he's from Nebraska, and he was the old city manager of Walnut Creek. He's also had the experience of serving as city manager for three other cities, so he has I guess sufficient experience. He was just saying, Gary, can wait for us, please. Thank you. Uh, he was inspired to go in this direction during his time with Peace Corps in Malaysia, and he hadn't considered this career path before. And that's kind of what I'm looking for that spark of imagination and inspiration to go towards a direction that I haven't considered before. So, let's see. So, the qualifications to be a city manager, he said that. One of three things you need to be a city manager, an MBA in business administration, an MPA in planning administration, or a master's in management, where St. Mary's offers, and I didn't know that before, St. Mary's College offers that. So what exactly a city manager does and how it works. So in Walnut Creek, it's different from other cities, but um, in Walnut Creek, the mayor is selected as a member of a five-member council, and they trade positions. The city manager and the attorney work for them, and they can be fired at any time. So it's, I guess, a hectic position, but rewarding, right? So that's what I got from it. One of the things, he talked about a couple of his accomplishments, and there's a skate park over by March, March Banks and Heather Drive, and it was an open area, but they wanted to do something with that area to encourage activity and, you know, give people that don't have organized sports something to do. So they discussed a skate park. And it was very controversial at the time because they thought it would be next to the tennis courts, it might cause some problem with food lungs or whatever. But that's not what happened. In fact, it's a very successful skate park. There's virtually no crime there. And there's classes even that are taught about skateboarding and whatever else at, at the skate park. So that was interesting to me. So Gary, he highlighted a couple of his approaches to being a city manager. And one of them, he talked about when uh, he mentioned the Walnut Creek Community Service Day. The first time they did it was October 2011, and it was a volunteer cleanup event. So the first year was very hands-on. He did everything he could to get people organized, you know, city newsletter, you know, blast, let people know about it. And then he had this establish and let go mentality. So you establish it, and then you leave it to whoever is involved to let them take care of it from then on. And Walnut Creek is not a full-service city, so the volunteer efforts that the citizens of this city have put forth have been really, have worked really well with his mentality. You know, so community involvement is big, and Gary, one of his quotes, I, I've summarized it, but he said, community involvement is big. The city pays for expensive infrastructure, but the volunteers reduce the overall cost by pitching in. Yeah, and one of the great examples would be, one of his proudest accomplishments, if I'm not incorrect, would be the new Walnut Creek Library. He took us over there and showed us everything inside, outside, and the, the citizens of the, the city raised $5 million for the library through the Library Foundation, and the city matched it with $35 million. So even though it's a small effort, it's, it shows that the community, the community cares. They want something great to happen in their city. And it, that shows their healthy civic culture and the same people for many generations. It shows, you know, everybody knows knows each other. They have an awareness of what's going on. And I guess my takeaway would be in most leadership positions, it's best to lead by example, get involved, and then leave it up to the community to keep it going. And building a strong community by asking people to step up and take care of what is theirs. 
and I hope to, I have recently joined Roadrock at UBC, like uh, Karen mentioned, and I hope to make more of a difference in my community. I've always been a volunteer-oriented person, and like you all are doing, I hope to make a difference in my community more than I'm doing. Now I became involved with Rotary was about several years ago, your governor, a then volunteer, I guess, uh, was organizing Camp Venture. It's been going on for 15 plus years, and they needed a facilitator. And Bill Oy, who was involved in the Concord Club, and is DBC's, um, I don't know if he has a new title now, but he was Dean of Students at the time. He asked if I would be interested. I interviewed and had the opportunity and the pleasure of being at Camp Venture for the past several years. It is a great opportunity, and uh, I welcome you all to come join us in 2013. It's, it's an experience that you'll never uh, relive. It's living in the dorms is nothing like it. And being, and, being, and being with Rotarians, I tell you. So that's how it all started because in May, uh, as part of uh, the business division at DVC, we're asked to do outreach and get our students involved with the community. And so uh, the light went on, and at one of these meetings, um, it was mentioned that another district south of here, we won't name them with the L, the L word, you know, you know where that is, uh, they do uh, a job shadowing event with Las Positas College. So uh, again, I thought about this and connected with our Dean, Dean Westlake, and she was in agreement and several other instructors. And so we connected with Laura, and she put us in touch with Jerry. And I think within 15 or 20 minutes, we had a committee. And we're so <laughs> grateful to Karen Lyle for taking this on. And as you can tell, um, this is a very innovative program. And the DVC students have really benefited from the successful Career Connections Day. And as being in the classroom, I teach part-time. I teach at three different campuses. So I teach at DVC uh, Pleasant Hill, DVC Santa Ramon. I'll be there tonight. And another Rotarian is going to be there. Justin Fowler from the Viable View is going to be there tonight to help us with the uh, program we're doing for Burkina Faso. That's a program that you're going to be rolling out in 2013. And then I also teach at uh, Las Madonnas College. So uh, we feel that part of our teaching is somewhat limited because we can only keep the students in a classroom setting. So by going out into the community and meeting with people like yourself and doing job shadowing or mentorship, it builds the students' uh, self-esteem. It gives them an opportunity to have a war with people they wouldn't necessarily meet. And it also lets them know about career options so they can plan and prepare for the future. And on behalf of the dean and the instructors at DEC, we really want to thank and acknowledge Karen Lyle. She was the uh, vocational coordinator and also Jennifer Wayne, who put on a very professional event uh, it was extremely uh, uh, positive and warmly uh, embraced by both mentors and the students. It has been a real pleasure collaborating with the Rotary Club of Walnut Creek, and we hope to continue this and look at uh, extending this. And Bob Romero mentioned, we're looking forward to continuing it in, as an annual event and coming back in 2013. So thank you all very, very much for your time and your efforts. I just want to say thank you to you for um, all you've done. You hear what she's saying about how she's going to connect Rotary with the students and so many ways, and she's not in Rotary yet. <laughs> thank you all so much. Everybody involved deserves a hand. Karen, especially, all of